So um, to review the, the purpose, um, we're going to look at the incidence and risk factors for endophthalmitis at Callahan, um, review the clinical management, visual outcomes, and cost of treatment, and then also evaluate the cost of routine prophylactic intracameral, or intracameral transonular, or intravitreal antibiotics. So um, before going into our particular study, I did want to go through some of the landmark studies, um, namely Eskris, some out of Sweden, um, and then the EVS study. Um, so in 2007, they did the Eskris study. This was based on early success coming out of Sweden with um, intracameral cefuroxime. Um, some of the risk factors that they found were significant for developing endophthalmitis um, were... Um, whether or not intracameral cefuroxime was given, um, clear corneal versus scleral tunnel incisions. Um, the type of wound closure was not found to be significant, whether it's suture or not. Um, insertion of the IOL was not found to be significant. The other significant things were the type of IOL material with silicone IOLs uh, found to be a risk factor. Um, and then, uh, of course, complications with surgery, communication with the vitreous cavity. Um, so looking at the etiology um, of um, the organisms most commonly found after acute um, endophthalmitis, um, it was, of course, gram-positive, but it's mainly uh, coag-negative staph. Um, you see um, gram-negative was more common in other countries, um, but was somewhere around 6 to 7% in the U.S. and U.K., Um, so the Eskris study um, grouped it into um, A, B, C, and D. Um, groups A and C did not have intracameral antibiotic injections, whereas B and D did. Um, the other thing that it was separated by was perioperative um, antibiotics. So um, if it was given one hour, 30 minutes, and five minutes before the surgery or not. Um, they did not find a significant difference between perioperative antibiotics, only whether or not intracameral antibiotics were given. Um, and you can see that um, it was a significant reduction in the rates of endophthalmitis um, with intracameral antibiotics. So similarly, Sweden found the same things. Um, some other additional risk factors were age greater than 85, again, communication with the vitreous cavity, um, and then the absence of giving intracameral antibiotics. Things that weren't found to be significant were uh, gender, diabetes, um, clear corneal incisions versus scleral corneal. Um, and part of the problem there was not a lot of surgeons were using scleral corneal incisions. And then um, preoperative antibiotics weren't found to make a difference. Um, but overall, you look at the very low rate of endophthalmitis, it was 0.029%. And that was over about 500,000 cases. Um, and then again, France showed the same thing. The only thing I want to point out here, um, they started using um, kind of kitchen sinks. So they were diluting it themselves, but moxifloxin um, during the case. Um, you can look at um, from 2012, um, from 2008 to 2012 versus commercially avail available um, cefuroxime um, from 2012 to 2014. Um, the rate of endophthalmitis was significantly lower. So that goes to show you dilution um, when you're preparing it yourself might be a bit of an issue, although the rate is still much lower when you give any form. Um, and then quickly, the EVS study, the highlights here are that, as you all know, um, with hand motion um, or better vision, they did not find any difference between a tap versus um, vitrectomy, um, but with LP vision, um, there was a much better chance of regaining more vision if you did an immediate vitrectomy. Um, however, the Ascaris study um, and some other studies have pointed out that it's probably better if you're able to do early vitrectomy in terms of getting better um, visual outcomes. Um, one recent study showed that 91% of patients got 20, 40 or better final visual acuity as opposed to only 53% in the EVS study um, as a result of doing earlier vitrectomy. So um, in the current study, um, we did a retrospective review of all cases of endophthalmitis, which occurred after cataract surgery only at Callahan Eye Hospital. 
and this was from 2012 to 2015. They all had to have at least three months follow-up. No cases were excluded. They all had that level of follow-up. Um, and we only looked at cases that developed within 42 days of the initial surgery. Um, we sorted out all cases by procedure code, and then there's also a quality care review committee um, which logged all cases of endophthalmitis. So if you look at the overall incidence of endophthalmitis, if you compare that to a lot of other studies in the U.S. and elsewhere that are not using intracameral injections, our rate was lower. Um, so it was about 0.085% averaged over the three years. Um, looking at the demographics and complications, you can see that four out of the 13 cases of endophthalmitis um, did have communication with the vitreous cavity. Um, and then not really a significant difference in the number of males versus left eyes. Um, and then we didn't see much of a difference in the age categories. Although there's such low numbers, it's hard to find any type of statistical significance. Um, if you look at the onset of endophthalmitis, as opposed to a study coming out of Baskin-Palmer, um, which saw a lot of more delayed cases, um, the average onset for us was about five days. Um, and you see a number of cases presented within one to three days of cataract surgery. Um, looking at the microbiology, um, it kind of fit with a lot of other studies. It was a little surprising that it was 100% gram-positive organisms, um, and again, mainly coag-negative staph. 61% um, um, of all the cases were coag-negative staph. Um, um, one of the problems we've run into is with antibiotic susceptibility, um, not having good um, ophthalmology-related drug uh, cultures. So a lot of the things they're checking for would be um, systemic drugs that we were given. So that shows a need that we need to probably have our own ophthalmology antibiogram. So we're testing for things we actually use. Um, looking at the visual acuity, um, you see that it's pretty comparable to that uh, EVS study in terms of starting visual acuity after the diagnosis of endophthalmitis. Um, however, if you look at the final outcomes, um, we had more patients with 20-40 or greater vision, almost 70%, and then we had more patients with less um, severe vision loss. So 85% of patients were 2100 or greater at, at their final follow-up. If you also look at the management of endophthalmitis, I think the large reason why we saw this was um, we didn't follow the EVS protocol. We did earlier vitrectomy. Um, so six out of 13 patients who had hand motion or better vision received an early vitrectomy as, as opposed to initial um, tap. If you look at the cost of endophthalmitis, our numbers are probably going to be a little bit higher than if you're looking at uh, ambulatory surgery center. Um, if you look at the overall cost of all cases, it was um, $240,000. This isn't necessarily what we got reimbursed, it was what we charged. And that also encompassed inpatient stays, the cost of all the medicines, and then uh, did not include the cost of extra follow-up visits that came from having endophthalmitis. Um, so now I want to look at the cost of prophylactic injections. Um, if you look at commercially available uh, intracameral cefuroxime, it's $13.25 in Europe per injection. If you times that by the number of cataract cases um, we performed over the past three years, it would be $203,000, which is cheaper than the overall cost of management of endophthalmitis. Um, some of the other uh, drugs people tend to use would be moxifloxacin. If you look at the good RX cost of that, it's $156. Um, however, we use that routinely after cataract surgery in all our patients. So if you take that bottle and pour it into a sterile vial and use that for all the cases in that room, it truly wouldn't cost you any extra money. Um, so quickly going through intracameral moxifloxin and vancomycin. Uh, of course, moxifloxin has both gram-positive and gram-negative coverage. The one thing you have to be concerned about is the rate of coag-negative staph having resistance to fluoroquinolones is going up. Um, so particularly having cultures that would look at the rate of resistance to fluoroquinolones would, would be very helpful for us. Um, vancomycin in our subset of 13 patients um, treated every single one of the patients. One other big um, issue now is whether or not you should just go dropless and do dropless cataract surgery. Um, so currently Impromis is selling Trimoxivanc or Trimoxy. $25 per injection was a quote I was given by the company. Um, and 80% of the time, patients won't need any additional drops after surgery. 
Patients who probably will would be diabetics or those with an EMP. Um, downsides would be the decreased wow effect from the um, steroid kind of clouding their vision initially. Um, and there, there are some reports of toxicity if um, improper dilution is used. So in conclusion, um, we had an overall lower rate of endophthalmitis than most other U.S. studies. Um, we should consider using intracameral antibiotics, particularly in the case of a broken bag or a complex case where hardware needed to be used um, to decrease the over financial burden of endophthalmitis.